Hello and welcome to another video by electricalpereview.com. In this episode, we're going to be covering engineering economics, an example to find the future worth given present value and uniform series. The question reads, a student wants to save up to purchase a $105,000 property in cash at the end of five years. If he makes an initial deposit of $20,000, followed by monthly payments of $1,200 at a nominal annual interest rate of 4.5% compounded monthly, Will he have enough? So basically, they're asking at the end of five years, if he invests or saves this way, will he at least have $105,000? So um, first things first, always draw the cash flow diagrams. It's going to save you from making all sorts of mistakes. So our cash flow diagram for this one looks something like this. So at a time of zero, we've got an initial deposit of 20000 we know that's going to be our value P. Now we need to find N. So kind of very, now we need to find N. So don't be confused. We're looking for at the end of five years. However, what's our compounding period look like? Well, this is saying compounded monthly. Remember N is gonna be the number of compounded periods. So if we're compounded monthly for a total of five years, since we know there's 12 years, or since we know there's 12 months, year this is going to give us a period of n equals 60. so this last period right here is going to be 60. so this is zero all the way up to 60. we want to know what this future value is and of course along the way we are going to have uniform payments equal to a equals twelve hundred dollars so every one of these payments from n equals one all the way up to n equals 60 is going to be a equals twelve hundred dollars and again the question really is just asking what is the future worth so is the future worth going to equal to one hundred five thousand dollars now this cash flow diagram is actually two cash flow diagrams uh, joined together we have one we have a present worth value we want to know what is this twelve? Sorry, what is this twenty thousand worth at the end of sixty periods? And the other is a uniform series. What are all of these monthly payments going to be worth at the end of a sixty-month period? So let's break this up into the two equivalent cash flow diagrams, and it's going to look something like this. Our first one, if we look at just the present worth, is going to look something like this right here, where we have an initial deposit of p equals to twenty thousand and nothing happens from zero all the way to n equals 60 at which case we make withdrawal we want to know what that withdrawal amount is and the second cash flow diagram is going to look something like this where we have monthly payments of twelve hundred dollars starting from n equals one all the way up to n equals 60. we want to find what the future worth the equivalent is going to be of all of those so how do we find this f up here well we know that this f since this cash flow diagram is a sum of these two we know that this f up here has to equal the sum of these two now we know the first one is a simple future worth given present worth problem so we know this one here is f equals p times f given p the second we know is a very simple f equals a times f given a this is just a simple feature worth of an annual or a uniform payment so to get this f up here all we really need to do is add them together we're going to have f equals p times f given p plus a times f given a okay so the first thing to do is write out our two formulas for f given p and f given a We've got f equals p times 1 plus i times the exponent of n. And the second one we've got a times, big parentheses, 1 plus i to the n minus 1 over i. Okay, here's where it gets tricky. If you don't know to do this next step, I guarantee you would have gotten this wrong. 
So the thing to point out is let's look at the interest. These formulas show interest in I. And what does I equal? I equals the effective interest. But if you read the problem, we're given nominal annual interest rate. Anytime you see nominal, anytime you see nominal at all, that's our clue that we know we're dealing with R. So we've got to go from R to I. How do we do that? Well, it's very simple. I equals R over M. We know what our R is. What is M? M is going to give us the number of compounding periods per year. So we know we are compounding monthly, right? 4.5% compounded monthly. There's 12 months in one year. We know M is just going to equal 12. So to find our I and get into the math, we've got I is going to equal our nominal interest, which is 4.5% divided by 12. And we carry this out, we come up with 0.375%. Or since we're going to be using it as a decimal, we've got I is going to equal 0 0.00375. Now, very important once again, anytime you see nominal, and your equation calls for I, you know you've got to get to I because the nominals are. Likewise, anytime you have a problem and you carry out the formula and you have R's instead of I's for continuous compounding and you're given effective, well then you've got to go from effective to R. So be very careful. Make sure you know what nominal and effective means. Okay, let's plug in our numbers and get on with it. So we have F equals the P of 20,000 times 1 plus i, 0 0.00375, times an exponent of n equals 60. That's our first term. Our second term is a, we know is $1,200. That's our monthly payment, times up top, 1 plus i, 0 0.00375, times an exponent of 60 minus 1, all on top of our same interest of i equals 0 0.00375. Now, another word of caution, be very careful. Anytime you've got this much going on in your calculator, double check your work. You want to make sure you're going to get a problem like this right uh, because you did everything right and you don't want to risk getting it wrong because you missed a negative or you missed a decimal. Things here can get confusing. Double check, so be very careful. All right, next we have this is going to equal f equals the first term we punched in and we get about $25,035.92. Next over here, we have, we punch it in, we get just about, let's see, $80,574.66. So we add them all together and we end up with a final answer of, after 60 months or five years, our student investing in this manner, he's gonna make a total withdrawal of $105,611. So the answer to this question is an absolute resounding yes. At the end of five years, our student is going to have much more than 105000 In fact, he's going to exceed that by $611. That's it for this example. Hope you enjoyed following along on this engineering economics example. For more PE exam practice problems, and of course, to try our premium online review course, come check us out at electricalpereview.com. See you soon.